Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a collective timeless pick a card reading. Now I am pre-recording this content. I just wanted to let you know the last two the last two or three, I'll check, I'll I'll pin a comment or something, but the last couple of readings were also pre-recorded. I'm experimenting with pre-recording because this week I happened to be lighter on client work. So I thought, well, with the extra time I have, why don't I record extra picker cards? And that way there will always be one. You know, even if I get super busy or I run out of energy or, you know, things fluctuate in my world. So since I've got a bit of downtime now, I thought, why don't I make lots of picker cards? And for example, we have just had the August full moon. So I've got the Nakshatra deck here. I thought it'd be fun to use it. But it doesn't matter when you and I are meeting. The fact is we're meeting at some point <laughs> in time and space. So I'm not sure when this is going to launch. I think it's important for me to state as well that it's pre-recorded because what if something happens in the world that's really major and I'm not talking about it? You guys might think, wow, that's strange. This big thing happened, but she didn't talk about it. Mind you, I don't really talk about world events here in Pick a Card anyway, but yeah, with the world the way it is, I mean, but things have been pretty quiet, but that could be just me. I'm not sure. Anyway... Today I wanted to take a look at, and so this is today. As I say, we are meeting at, at some point in time and space and the future and the past, these are all illusions anyway. So we're really tapping into the eternal now and we are together and that's all that matters. So I wanted to take a look because last week I think we had a look at it it was quite a love life reading and it was very small as well. Did you notice last time's reading was very short? We'll see what happens in today's reading. I have no idea. Uh, we've got the topic, what is abundant in your world right now? I wanted to take a look at abundance. Just let's explore that. Let's see what that is. And we'll listen to Louise Hay. I've got this brilliant clip by her where she's talking about prosperity and I thought oh yeah it's such a good idea let's talk about uh, let's well let let me share what she has to say because she sums it up so nicely she really puts abundance in perspective so I'll shuffle while she gives us some wisdom and we'll see what happens there is an absolute abundance of money on this planet. There is so much money that we can't even count it. And yes, it is true that there are many people who have very little, but it has nothing to do with the amount of money that's here. It's a lack of consciousness. It's a not deserving, not accepting. And are you aware that there are billions and billions of people on this planet? And yet you will hear people tell you that they're lonely. It has nothing to do with the amount of people. It's because we put walls up and we won't allow the love to come in. We have an abundance of air on this planet. You know, if you think about it, our most precious substance is the air we breathe. When we exhale, we take it absolutely for granted that the next breath will be there. And if we didn't have a next breath, we wouldn't live for three minutes. We literally would not get out of this room alive. And yet we take it absolutely for granted that when we exhale, the next breath is going to be there. And we're all breathing in this room. And I'm not saying, don't breathe, there's not enough for me. We just assume. Now, if the most precious substance in our life has been given to us with such abundance and that there's enough to last for as long as we shall live, then can we not trust that other things will be taken care of? All right. Love that. Love that quote about, especially about the abundance of oxygen. It's so good. It really puts it in perspective for me that the most precious item is so freely available. And I know we do have our doubts 
about oxygen nowadays because yeah the, the, you know the air quality of some places is not uh, in the best shape so I do know about that but let's not get you know too uh, detailed <laughs> and perfectionist I guess like the fact is the oxygen air we have so much of it so much it's so abundant and we do kind of take it for granted I must admit for me these days when I'm walking down the street and things like that I do consciously breathe in I do this more and more and more and I think it's also because over the course of my life especially when I was very young I always had really bad breathing problems uh, asthma and things like that so yeah it's it's pretty interesting for me like oxygen is it something I take for granted no because I had so many lung problems that I, I really don't take it for granted anymore yeah kind of at least once a day I'll have a conscious deep breath in and I just feel oh it feels so good that wow I can breathe and there's no pain and there's no fluid in my lungs and I'm healthy and like I, I am grateful for that I make sure I try to make it a point that once a day I am grateful for that just in my mind I don't have a routine or a kind of formalized sit down thing where I do a gratitude journal or none of that no I just once a day just try to be really grateful for being healthy as a tiny micro practice you know a micro spiritual practice and I think that's what Eckhart Tolle says he says that rather than having a big meditation practice or something like that that you do you know in a formal way like 20 minutes a day or, or something like that he says instead of doing that just have lots of tiny micro processes that you do during the day like taking in a conscious breath and just feeling good that wow that that lung full of air feels great you know taking out taking our pleasure from the really simple things rather than the um rather than the extravagant ones okay well let's see what comes through it's interesting i've got the saturn deck here i am wearing a dark blue and the card that popped out of nakshatra deck we've got a saturn uh saturnian nakshatra there so we'll see which one it is all right let's see what we've got here I have no idea <laughs> as usual okay Ooh, making a choice all right well it's good that you are here for a reading because maybe this reading will provide some clues as to what choice you might like to take yeah Anuradha Nakshatra Okay, so it is lauded by Saturn. Symbol is Lotus. Yes. Deity Mitra, God of Light. Aim, Dharma. Yes. Solar sign Scorpio. That's fascinating. I've been thinking about Anuradha Nakshatra quite a bit lately, actually. At work. Okay, this is a bit of a work reading. You excel at figuring out what's hidden from the view of most people. You've got grit and the ability to do wow the tough aspects that others won't touch yes that is exactly oh this is so, i'm sorry i'm just a little bit too excited there i'm soon to record the hero archetype and you're going to see i'm going to talk about somebody who's got anuradha nakshatra very prominent in his chart and i might as well just tell you now it, it's dr charlie teo he's got i'm pretty sure it's anuradha nakshatra i'll double check while i'm editing but he he has got the grit and he's got the ability to do the tough aspects that others won't touch that's exactly him he takes out these brain tumors that no other doctor will touch he takes on that work and that's why i've got him listed in the hero archetype you'll see when i do that video i'm going to explain it more interesting so what's abundant in your world right now well i would say courage grit the ability to face something yeah that others won't touch so true oh wow yeah three of swords okay we'll have a look at that further we'll go into that
We'll see what messages come. Holding on. Yeah, okay. 13, relationship. Holding on. What's he holding? Is it like a picture or something? Yeah, it's a picture. Oh, wow. And there's a phone right next to him. Okay. Right. Buddha. Without acknowledging the shadows, enlightenment is elusive. Yeah. Okay, so we've got green, we've got mercury, Bud, mercury. What is abundant in your world right now? What is abundant in your world right now? You're making a choice. Let's see. What is abundant? Well, I am seeing a tough situation here and it's kind of like you're wanting to figure out do I go down this road or do I go down this road? And sometimes with these which road do I go down? And, and we can see that here with the depiction. You know, this person and, God, do I make the phone call or do I not? You know, do I, do I approach that person or do I not? Do I, and especially with relationship and with heart and with love and if this is a love thing, that stuff's really difficult. But it could even be a job application. It could be all kinds of different situations where you're really not sure which pathway to take. You might be wondering, is it safer to just stay alone or stay on my own or stay at this plane of life? Is it safer to just do that? But you've got Anuradha Nakshatra coming through and you'll see, I'm gonna talk about this Nakshatra in the hero archetype. I'd say what's abundant in your world right now is actually courage and intelligence. So you've, these are abundant. But I think where you're having the dilemma is the next action to take. What do I do? So we'll, we'll get some cards on these. Okay, so Three of Swords, let's get a card here. Are these upright? Yes. Well, and I, I just saw and at the bottom of the deck, I'll show you Six of Swords. So I did see it. That is a walking away type sign. But let's shuffle properly. So as in don't pick up the phone and don't approach that person if that's the situation that you're in you might need alone time you might need he time to heal you know okay and then we'll take one for holding on right okay Justice. Justice, Libra, seventh house, relationships, heart, marriage, breakup. Do I stay? Do I go? All that. Yep. Okay. Do I stay? Do I go? Maybe it has ended. You know? Maybe it's over. Healing. Yeah. I think you're in a phase of healing I don't like what what would I advise to this person who's holding on to the the picture frame and the person and, and wondering do I call do I do something my advice would be don't do anything right now is what I would say you've got this healing card come through and it's like if you heal properly 
like God can come in and make all of life easy for you. It, I kind of get the sense you're trying to do everything or you're trying to do too much. And you're not... Yeah, I, you're, kind, you're, pro, you're probably thinking that you're small and alone and separate and isolated because we've got this person in a room you see they're they're walled off they're boxed off from the world there's no blue sky or there's not even a window or there's not greenery there's nothing so i think you're trying to do everything and, and you're trying to do too much And I feel like the universe definitely does want to help you. But you're not allowing the universe to come in. So, okay, so how do we do that? And what does that mean? <laughs> okay, let's take a look. So you're not allowing the universe to step in. Hang on, I'm just going to... Oh, I think it's much easier if I just sit on the floor. Let's try that. Is that easier? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, just trying to get comfortable here. Okay. Let's see. So we just talked about the universe and we talked about the universe wants to help you. What can the universe step in and do? Okay, so let's say you improve. Let's say you heal. Let's say you decide, all right, I'm, I'm going to turn away from the outside world, from needing or wanting anything from the outside world. I'm going to turn away from that and I'm going to go within. I'm going to heal. And, I, and the concept is I want to have a good relationship with the universe. I want to have a good relationship with the all is one. Okay, so let's say we're at that place. What guidance or what comes through? Ooh. One ring circus. Yes, yes, the all is one. One ring circus. Okay. Any other guidance? One ring circus. Like, I'm seeing perspective. Immediately you elevate, because from here she can see the bigger picture. She can see far more. So if you take some time out from the world and from thinking that the solution is out there, you come within, you commit, commitment, you commit to having a really good relationship with the divine, with the all is one, the one ring circus. And then let's see what guidance comes through. These two are sticking out. Four of Pentacles holding on again. Kind of goes here. High Priestess. You're in quite a loop, quite a loop because she's not saying anything and you're still holding on. Hmm. And it's, and it's kind of like still, I'm not getting any sense of any guidance from the universe, the universe in quote marks. Okay, I'm going to clarify this with something from here. Because you're looping. Yeah, you'll heal, but then you're going to loop back into this. How do you how, Okay, let's let's ask a more direct question. How do you break the how do you get out of this loop? You're in a you're in a loop. How do how do you break that? I do want to use a different deck. We'll use this one.
Ten of Swords. There's something you need to end. There's something you need to finish. There's something you need to end. And it's like when you end that thing, and the, the, what is it that you're ending? This could be you're ending thinking small about yourself or you're ending, you know, you're ending judging yourself harshly. There's some internal thing that you're doing that you need to end. Any clues on that? Let's just get another card and we'll get one from this deck because this deck has been helpful. This is the deck that has taken us out of that loop. So I'm coming back here for more guidance. Um, any clue as to what, what are you ending? What are you finishing? I mean, an obvious kind of thing is to say, do you know, I, I mean, I am getting this, yeah, it's, it's so literal, but maybe a relationship with someone else or yeah. Maybe you're ending thinking that the answer is always out there. But if this is a love situation, you could be heartbroken over someone, but then it's like maybe, maybe you, st you haven't let go of your first love yet. Or and maybe you think you have, maybe you think, but I have done that. I have, I split up from that person decades ago or whatever, maybe, maybe you did, but have you really? Or maybe you haven't let go of what you hoped and wanted actually from a parent. It could be that. Okay. We'll get one more. This is the six of cups. This is nostalgia. This is something from the past. It's like you have to finish something from the past. We'll get one more. Oh, Queen of Swords. Yeah, you need a boundary. There's like, it's like there's, maybe there's someone you need a boundary from. You need to erect a boundary or you need to somehow let them know, yeah, look, I don't want to do this. Or, yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but I mean, well, she's sure. Queen of Swords, she's very certain. She's just like, you know, yeah, she, when she wants to erect a boundary, she'll do it. She won't, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, we we're talking about the hero here. Yeah, she won't mince words. She'll be very precise, like surg surgical precision, you know. Yeah, all right, okay. So we can see, I can see some things here. I can see that I think there's something you need to end because you are looping. You're looping through here. Gosh, that is a bit bright out there. Let me see if I can just lower the blind. The camera's about to cut out as well. Does that help? I think that helps a bit. Yeah, good. Okay, so you've been looping, right? You've been looping around through this process. And it's like, how many times do you want to keep looping through that? You pr probably don't want to keep doing that. Something's got to end. It's something from the past. Something's got to end. It's something from the past. You need to erect a boundary and be quite certain about it and defined about it. Let's get another card just about your relationship with the universe. Any more guidance want to come through here? Actually, do you know what? We'll get one of these. 
And I have to be careful with this deck because well, it's been a long time since I've used it, but I kind of know what the colors mean. So in order to draw one, what I'll do is I'll do that. So I can't tell and I'm looking up now so that I can't even see anything. All right, I've picked that one. Okay, we'll see what comes. Relationship with the universe and one of these. But what is abundant in your world right now? I can tell you, the cur you've got, you're abundant in courage actually. You're abundant in intelligence. But it feels like, yeah, there's something that you need to cl clean up here. There's something that's like not, um, you need to, there's something that you just need to clean up, make it clear, make it certain. It's like this fuzziness is possibly blocking your abundance right now. And you do what's right for you. You don't do what's right for other people or anyone else. No, you think about you. Okay, we'll take what's at the bottom. All right. All right, <laughs> let's see what comes. Oh, this is exciting. This has been a very interesting reading. Let's try and clear the table a bit. There we go. I think that looks good. Yes. Oh, the camera battery's flashing as well. No. Oh, that's so nice. Look at this. Sorry, the camera just got cut out. As I was being super excited and I was going, look at this. Vision, grace, ease. You don't want to keep cycling around through here. And there's also a tightness. There's a holding on. It's like, let go. You want ease, okay? If your shoulders are stiff, tune into them now. Just let go. Just what about your eyebrows? Are they, what are they called? Burrowed? Furrowed? I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up. But <laughs> like, relax your eyebrows. You know, relax. Let go. Let the universe take over. It wants flow and ease. It wants, you know, it'll make life so easy for you. And that's how to do that is to be real, is to be in the now, is to think about, okay, my body, am I tired? Am I hungry? Do I need to drink something? Do I need to rest, you know, like do the physical things. Also, you can clean your place. We've got here Anuradha Nakshatra, we've got Scorpio. An activity for you that could be really good is cleaning your place, is clutter clearing, is because that's what you do. What is abundant in your world right now when we want to invite Goddess Lakshmi into our place, what do we do? We clean the house first. Every time when I clean my flat, and I do it every Saturday, usually every Saturday I do cleaning because it's Saturn's day and I clean, I get organized and that's kind of my little ritual. And then once I've done the cleaning, I put the candles on in my place and I kind of just in my head just invite Goddess Lakshmi, hey, you know, you can come out and can come and hang out here, you know, and uh, so abundance wants to come in. All the good stuff wants to come in. There's just something about you needing to allow it. And that's feminine energy, allowing. Okay, let's see what's in here. There we go. Oh, fantastic. Hanumanji is here, unwavering devotion. Yeah. And if you can have that unwavering devotion to the divine, Okay, don't have that, uh, was it, I was going to say don't have that for a person. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to stand by me saying that because that's too much pressure to put on one person. He had this unwavering devotion placed on God. God can handle that, you know, God can deliver on that amount of devotion. So have that unwavering devotion with God, with the one, with the all is one. Look at that. That's the guidance for the all is one here. The all is one is saying, have unwavering devotion for me and I will give you everything. So that's it. That's all you got to do at this time. Strengthen your relationship with the divine. And, uh, you know, every time you come to one of these crossroads here, it will be easy and look at that we've got purple here and we've got purple here it's like choose God choose the divine and then every choice you make will be easy 
let's take a couple of quotes i almost forgot about the quote jar <laughs> apologies as well about the um the camera cutting out gosh it's raining outside it's all going on here and in, in well where am i i'm not i'm not in central london i'm in greater outer reaches london london sticks <laughs> Okay, what does it say here? Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. Yeah, Lao Tzu. And I think that mastering yourself is also recognizing that God is within you. Okay, so when it says mastering yourself, that, that why I could do with being capitalized. And that's true power. Wonderful. Okay, take one more. Gosh, it's boiling hot in here. I just have to, sorry, take off my jumper. There we go. <laughs> Before I completely melt. Okay. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Lao Tzu, yeah, that's brilliant. You are the all is one. You're, you're like a tiny fragment of it. So side with the big power, with the all is one, you know, side with that and Nothing can stop you, nothing can block you. And you'll feel good. You'll just feel an ease and a happiness and a joy that is always there. Peace. Peace is wonderful. Ego makes peace seem like it's boring. What is boredom? Boredom is peace that's been hijacked by the ego. I think I said that to my mum this morning and she was like, oh, that's that's a very interesting thing to say. She liked it, I think. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll try and remember that one, see if I can stick it in a pick a card. But yeah, I mean, peace is, is kind of like, peace is wonderful, peace is it. If we have peace in our world, well, what more do we want? But then ego will make it seem like that's boring. No, that's the best thing. So yeah, I do hope that this reading contained a message for you let me know how you got on in the comments below and i look forward to seeing you next time